Forest is one of the latest survival horror games to be unleashed for early access on PC. Dave, I hope you brought your brown pants. Brown pants engaged. Like all good stories, the forest begins with a plane crash on a remote island inhabited by cannibalistic tribes people. Sitting next to who we can only assume is your son, you plummet out of the sky in what is probably the coolest video game plane crash to date. It's intense, isn't it? No flashes to wide or cheeky cuts. You go down with the plane all the way. As you begin to regain consciousness, you see a tribesman collect your young companion and disappear before you can fully recover. Once you're on your feet, it's time to gather up supplies and set out to find your child. I mean, we assume it's your child. That's not entirely clear at this point. Something they do make clear is that this game is in what's called early alpha, which is a polite way of saying, hey, we'd really like some keen beans to bug test this game and pay for the privilege because it's not quite finished yet. <laughs> yeah, and one of the side effects of its unfinished state is that not all of the island is open for exploration yet. This means that any direction you choose to walk will see you hitting the coast pretty quickly. Well, yeah, it might be quick if you manage to evade the patrolling cannibals. It's quite intimidating watching these search parties scour the island for traces of your presence. Yeah, despite its bugginess, the AI is shaping up to be really cool. Enemies will react to anything abnormal, like trees you've cut down, and there's certainly an air of mystery around them and their ceremonial culture. They seem to have a class system, and they're so unpredictable. I mean, they might be curious one time and then really aggressive the next. <laughs> I mean, it certainly keeps you on your toes. Yeah, and these guys are really agile. Dashing about, climbing trees and leaping towards you, all with really slick animations. They're scary buggers, especially because they're normally in groups. I tried to run away usually, but most of the time, you'll be forced to fight. It is good combat, though. Yeah, the fighting's got a really solid feel to it. Hits are heavy and swings and blocks are responsive. But I just think the cannibals can take way too much of a beating. I mean, it's like 15 axe chops to the face to finish them off. I think they need to work something out there. I think maybe even 14 would be too many. A good idea would be maybe starting off with a blunt weapon so that there's a better sense of progression as you build items that are more effective in combat. I mean, at the moment, it feels like I'm whacking them with a pool noodle. <gasps> Weapons progression would make sense because a big part of this game is crafting. Yeah, I mean, pool noodle, then like a club or something, then an axe. There is a great sense of satisfaction in building a base. I managed to build a nice little shelter and a solid fire, which I defended with the strength and determination of Thor. Not a bad effort if I do say so myself. Yeah, it's a good feeling. I mean, after a few lives, you'll throw caution to the wind, madly collecting whatever you can and dashing about trying to uncover the secrets of the island's cavernous core. But as soon as you have a little foothold and start to feel like you're doing well, the stakes are dramatically raised. I mean, it may not be the wisest choice, but I like to build on the coast just so I can you know, really soak in those views. Yes, if it weren't for those pesky, yet admittedly well-oiled cannibals, <laughs> this would be a wonderful place to visit. There's also some nice dynamic lighting and weather effects, which make for some gorgeous sunsets. Also, there's heaps of wildlife. Rabbits, goannas, birds chirping about. It almost feels like you're in a Disney film. That is, until you realize you're actually in an Eli Roth-esque horror film. Disney. Eli Roth. Disney. Eli Roth. Disney. Eli Roth. The inventory system is really cool and not as sluggishly realistic as some other survival games, which I think works for this one. You lay all your items out on a tarp to check them and assess their use, as well as crafting new items. Take the ridiculously fun but arguably overpowered Molotov cocktail, for example. I mean, this all works well and seems pretty logical at this point, so I'm looking forward to seeing them take that idea a little bit further. Yeah, it can feel like a bit of a hordathon. Collecting rocks and leaves and logs and body parts. You know, the standard survival paraphernalia. 
I do like that there's aloe vera, presumably to help soothe sunburn. If those cannibals are coming from me, I don't want to give them the satisfaction of me already being slightly pre-cooked. I want them to work for this. <laughs> Did you also notice there's bottles of alcohol everywhere? I mean, these cannibals must have having some serious raging parties. I say, this cannibal party's going off! Yeah, man, you want some brains? Woohoo! <laughs> there are a lot of things I'd like to see before the forest hits full release, but I'd have to say the main one would be multiplayer. Once the map is a bit bigger, it would be cool to build a fortified, self-sustaining town with some friends and slowly drive the cannibals off the island. I'd like to have Liam Neeson do some voice acting for the protagonist. This game has Liam Neeson written all over it. Plane crash, a la The Grey. Stolen child, a la Taken. Um, lots of lists for crafting, a la Schindler's List. <laughs> well, I think that last one's a little bit of a stretch, but look, there's a lot of things that are wrong with the forest. A la The Phantom Menace. Yes, but unlike that prequel, I think this actually has a lot of promise. With all of these elements, this could become the benchmark for survival games in the future. I'm really looking forward to playing more of this once the full game is released. Yeah, me too. But for now, here's Goose with the news. Schindler's List?